The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Stop fiddling, folks, when buying smokes, join in the swing to pleasure. These luckies are a richer blend with mildness for good measure. Take away my diamond clips, the pearls that I adore. For luckies are a girl's best friend and right in every store. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Enjoy your cigarette. Enjoy truly fine tobacco that combines both perfect mildness and rich taste in one great cigarette, Lucky Strike. For only fine tobacco gives you both real mildness and rich taste. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So friends, be happy, go lucky, try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis. Hold Perry, it, Don, Denver. Don, hold it. Hold it, hold it. Wait a minute, Phil. Hold it, hold it. Hold it, everybody. What's the matter, Jack? Look, we'll be on the air in a few minutes, and the opening is still not right. Now, rehearse it again. But, Jack, I read the opening like I always do. Oh, it isn't you, Don. It's the music. And what, pray tell, is wrong with the music? <laughs> the same thing, pray tell, that's been wrong with it for 15 years. <laughs> Phil, it's too loud. Nobody can hear Don. I can tell you now, Phil, you'll never get anywhere with that kind of blast. Look, Jackson, now listen to me. I've got a Cadillac, a yacht, and a mansion in Encino. Show me one Claire de Lune man who can top that. <laughs> Phil, I know you have a Cadillac, a yacht, and a mansion. What, are you, what, what did your music have to do with getting all those things? My band played Here Comes the Bride. I looked at that little blonde standing beside me, said, I do, and they were mine, all oh, mine. <laughs> He admits it yet. Jack, we'll be on the we'll be on the air in a minute, so why upset yourself? But Mary. Well, Phil has a lot of bad musicians, and there's nothing you Wait can do about it. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold it a minute, May Company Maisie. <laughs> Let's get something straightened out. What do you mean about bad musicians? For your information, Liv. My string section used to be with Whiteman, and some of my boys were with Dorsey. Well, I'm talking about the fellas who worked with King. Wayne King? No, Waste King. They used to install them. <laughs> that, I believe, and I like that, Mary. Now, Phil, let's take the opening theme again, and please... Oh, Jack, we haven't time for that now. The audience is coming into the studio. Oh, gee, I hope we have a good crowd. I'm going to peek through the curtain and see. Hmm, looks pretty good. One, two, three, four, five... Jack, Jack, stop counting. The tickets are free. <laughs> oh, yes, I keep forgetting, you know. Next aisle over, please. Next aisle over. Don't crowd, please. Don't crowd. Oh, Lamb. Lamb! Coming, Ellie. I almost lost your place in line. What took so long? I got into a big argument in the lobby. Why? What happened? They wouldn't let me hitch my horse to that statue of Mr. Paley. <laughs> Understand Keep what? moving, please. Now, see here, don't push me around, Sonny. Mr. Benny mailed me my tickets personally. Come on, Ellie, let's sit down here in the front row. Okay, Lim. I'm glad we got here on time. Yeah, good thing we turned the rooster back an hour last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, let's sit down and open the lunch basket. Here's a banana. A banana? That'll hold you till I get out the sandwiches and pour the coffee. Okay. You know... I heard Mr. Benny's program last week, and it was really a dilly. <laughs> Almost as good as Spate Cooley. <laughs> you know, when he came out and said... Oh, look, Lamb, the curtain is opening.
The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman's Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who is loved, admired, and respected by millions. And here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. Hi, Rube. <laughs> What? Thanks for the tickets. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, your introduction was Heard just... Heard the show last week. Laughed so hard I fell off my milking stool. <laughs> now, look. Now, Mr. if it hadn't been, if I hadn't had a good grip on that cow, I'd have broke my nose. <laughs> you hadn't muffed that line, you'd have gotten a bigger laugh, too. <laughs> Now, why doesn't he be keep quiet? Jack, 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 the show. Oh, yes. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And, Don, it gives me great pleasure to announce that tonight we're going to do a sketch to celebrate a great event in California history. This event happened on September 9th, 100 years ago. Now, kids, who knows why Californians will always cherish that wonderful day? I do. Why? No smog. <laughs> I mean another reason. Don, do you know what California is celebrating? No. Don, you mean to tell me that you, a college man, a radio announcer, don't know California history? That's disgusting. Now, just a minute. Why should I know about California history? I was born in Colorado. Well, some of you must have flabbed over into California. <laughs> <laughs> but since none of you seem to know, I'll tell you. This month, in fact, all this year, we're celebrating the California Centennial. Centennial? What's that? What's that, Phil? A hundred years ago, California joined the Union. The whole state? <laughs> Why, certainly. That patroller really is on his toes, ain't he? <laughs> yes, Phil, yes. Ain't he, ain't he? What English? You know, it's a shame. Once in a while, I get into a mood where I try to discuss a subject of national importance, there isn't one member of my cast that I can talk to intelligently. Hello, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Dennis, you can go and sit down. Yes, sir. Now, Don, as long as there's no one here who knows anything about this subject, we might as well try and do something else. Oh, Mr. Benny. What? Did you know that this month we're celebrating the California Centennial? Yes, yes, I know it. I just said it. Now, Don... It was just 100 years ago, September 9th, that the state of California was admitted to the Union. I know, I know. Of course, California was discovered in 1542 by Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo. That gave Spain the right of discovery. However, Spain at this time was busy with affairs in Europe and neglected the territory. Well, in the year 1769, Carlos III of Spain sent forward the Porto La Serra expedition. This was the beginning of the building of the missions and the conversion of the Indians on the Porto La Serra. Then colonization followed. The colonists were sent from Mexico. Then in 1822, California became a territory of the Republic of Mexico. At the close of the Mexican War with the United States, February 2nd, 1848, by the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, California passed into control of the United States. Two weeks before this, January 24th, a mill was being built for Sutter of Sutter's Fort at Coloma. Sutter? John Sutter. John Sutter? John A. Sutter. His wife's name was Mildred. Oh, oh. The California Territory was especially desirable to the United States because of its strategic position and its natural resources, such as gold, silver, oil, and timber. At Sutter's Mill, as I mentioned before, gold was discovered, <laughs> culminating in one of the greatest gold rushes in history. And so on September 9th, 1850, California was made a state and admitted to the Union. Damn it. Dennis, that was wonderful. I mean, how do you get your information? I dial 113. <laughs> you dial... I've got more information on my little finger than you have in your whole head. <laughs> well, Dennis, it's hard for me to get my head in the dial. 
Anyway, Dennis, it's not important how you acquired your information. The mere fact that you were able to retain it is an accomplishment in itself. I sing, too. I know, I know. Now, let's have your song because we have a very important sketch to do. I hope it's as funny as last week. Oh, be quiet. What are you going to sing, Dennis? Well, I'm going to sing a little ditty called... Oh, Dennis, Daddy. don't talk! <laughs> Just sing your song. by Dennis Day. And Dennis, you sang it beautifully. California was the 31st state admitted to the Union. <laughs> what? I forgot to mention that before. Oh. Well, thanks, kid. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to present... The first governor of California was named Peter H. Burnett. Dennis. His wife's name was Mabel. <laughs> Dennis, we don't need any more information, so drop it. Jack, if you're going to do a play about California, you better get started. Mary, I'm trying to. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, in honor of the California Centennial, we are going to present a play based on this historical event. All right, Don, let's get started with our tribute to California. Am I going to be in the play? In it? You're going to be technical advisor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Don. Introduce the play. Okay, Jack. Oh, darn it, the phone. I'll get it. Whoop. <laughs> Who threw that banana peel on the stage? Hi, Rube! <laughs> What? California got its first shipment of bananas in 1864. <laughs> Dennis, I don't care when. Okay, okay. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Oh, Rochester, what do you want? Have you been shopping lately? Shopping? Yes, last Wednesday I bought some clothes. Why? There's a man here from Sears Robe up with your new suit. <laughs> Well, you can tell the man it's about time. It sure is a nice suit, boy. You really like it? Yeah, I hope it looks as good on you as it does on him. <laughs> uh, Rochester, you mean he came from the store wearing my new suit? Yeah, he said for the price you paid, they couldn't afford to put it in the box. <laughs> oh. Well, look, tell the man... Now hold it, boss. 
What? Here comes Roebuck wearing the extra pair of pants. <laughs> Well, look, Rochester, I'm in the middle of the program. Hang up the clothes and I'll see you later. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? You got a letter from Alcatraz. <laughs> oh, oh, from my agent. Oh, what does he say? Open it up. It's already been opened. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> well, well, what does he say? I'll, I'll read it to you. Dear Jack, next Friday is my birthday. And if you want to send me monogram shirts, my initials are nine, three. Ah, <laughs> uh, good old nine. <laughs> what else does he say? Uh, P.S. I can't wait to see you on television, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, I'll answer him when I get home. So long, Rochester. Goodbye. All right, Don. All right, Don, start the play. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, to commemorate the centennial of California, we bring you our version of one of the historic events that took place in this great state. Curtain music. <laughs> and I were a couple of prospectors drifting from place to place. In the year 1849, we found ourselves in the sleepy little Mexican pueblo of Nuestra Senora La Reina de Los Angeles de Porquinurco. <laughs> in English, this meant stop here for plant inspection. <laughs> One night, Tex and I were in the only lively place in town, Pedro's Saloon. <laughs> Been a pretty exciting evening here at Pedro's, eh, Tex? Sure has, Slim. Yes, we better get going. Wait a minute, Slim. I uh, uh, want another drink. Now, hold on, Tex. I know it ain't none of my business, but you've been drinking a little too much. Well, it ain't my fault, Slim. Uh, I only drink to forget. What are you trying to forget? All the years I went around sober. <laughs> Well, I'll drink with you, but stand up for this one. Oh, bartender. Bartender. What will you have, senor? I'll have a double tequila. And what for you, senor? Well, I'm kind of hungry. I'll have a sandwich. Okay, but you will have to go outside and eat it on your horse. This is a drive-in. <laughs> <laughs> then don't bother. You know, Tex, I like this little town. I think... Move over, you hombres. I want a drink. Stop shoving, mister. I said move over. I'm a warning you. You better... Slim, not... be careful. That's Wendy Wilson, the toughest man in these parts. Oh, he is, eh? <laughs> well, I'll take care of that. <laughs> I shot him in the stomach. <laughs> now, look, Slim. Which one of us you talking to? He's a-talking to me. <laughs> now, what do you want here, anyway? Well, wait a minute, partner. I didn't come here to fight. I came here to see the singer at this here saloon. Got a new song for by Stephen Foster. No kidding. How does it go? Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike. Hilly, poop, 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 poop. <laughs> Italy Poop Poop is by Stephen Foster? <laughs> yep, it's called Genie with the Light Brown Tobacco. Oh. Well, look, look, here comes the singer now. Yeah. I watched her. She came through the door. She was a beautiful Mexican girl with dark skin and black eyes. And she had a perfect figure. Ankles, eight inches. Calves, 13 inches. Hips, 34. And a 25-inch waist. I was never without my tape measure. <laughs> I looked at her and said, Hello, girlie. Are you the singer in this saloon? Si. You sing here every night? Si. Are you single? Si. What's your name? Sue. <laughs> Sue? See. 
Well, say, Sue. <laughs> After your show tonight, how about going out with me? We could have a lot of fun together. Do not get fresh with me, senor. The bartender, he is my brother. Ah, oh, you're kidding. Hey, bartender. Si. Can I talk to you a minute? Si. Are you her brother? Si. What's your name? Si. Well, look, Sai, I want to go out with your sister, see? She so. I know she sued, Sai. I heard Sue say so. What did you say, senor? A kill, Sai. It was easier than reading that line again. <laughs> Sue, I think you and I ought to get married. But why, senor, should I marry you? Because now you're alone. I just killed your brother. <laughs> I love you, Sue. If you marry me, you'll make me the happiest... Gold! Ma- gold has been discovered up north! Gold! Do you hear me? Gold! 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 Goodbye, Sue! Come on, Tex! We're a-going north! <laughs> seconds, Pedro's saloon was empty. Everyone had rushed out, including Cy. He was dead, but he didn't want to be poor. <laughs> Tex and I rushed over to the general store to outfit ourselves for the long trek to Sutter's Mill. We bought burrows, shovels, picks, blankets, and tents, and a hacksaw in case we visited my agent. <laughs> Fully outfitted, we started on our trek up the San Joaquin Valley. We had all our equipment piled into a covered wagon, which was pulled by 16 mules. Clippity clop, clippity clop, get off there, mule! Sutter who? I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. I'm on my way to Sutter's Mill where the gold dust waits for me. But if I do not find it there, I know I'll surely die. And when I'm dead and buried, oh, Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. I'm on my way to Sutter's Mill with a nail XMFD. Clippity clop, clippity clop. Come on, you mule. Come on, you mule. Someday I'm going to write a song about that. I got the title already. Good night, Irene. <laughs> I came from Alabama with an ashtray on my knee. Because I'm always smoking lucky strike a cigarette for me. They're round and firm and fully packed and easy on the draw. For forest days and mild as dew, the best you ever saw. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. For I'm on my way to Sutter's Mill with an LSMFT. Clippity clop, clippity clop. Come on there, mule. Come on, Nellie. Come on, Francis. 30 pounds smoking satisfaction. Lucky strikes are fine. Just light one up and you'll agree, my darling Clementine. So be happy. Go lucky strike with me. Cause sure enough, there's no rough up in an LSMFT. Go on, the more Slim. I'm quitting. Let's keep digging, Tex. I'm sure we'll find gold soon. Oh, no. I can't go on, I tell you. I can't go on. This digging is breaking my back. The shoveling is killing me. And look at my hands. They're raw and bleeding. <laughs> and the sun is ruining my hair. That's good acting, Tex, but you can't give up digging now. <laughs> if we hit gold, we'll be... Tex! Look, I just hit it. A vein of gold. We done it. We done it. That's dead it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> when it came to English, I knew Tex was right. He had graduated from Harvard. Magna cum laude. <laughs> Now that we found gold, we really went to work. Now, come on, Tex. Let's get to work. There's a lot of gold here, and we're going to find it. Down, Tex, down. We're being attacked by Indians. Get down, Tex, down. Oh, oh. That arrow get you, Tex? Tex, Tex, speak to me. Tell me you ain't hurt. That isn't. <laughs> Tell me you isn't hurt. <laughs> but I are. <laughs> well, don't worry, Tex. I look, look, the chief of the Indians is coming toward us. Yeah, you stay here. I'll go and talk to him. Use good English. <laughs> I will. How? How? Me, he big Indian chief. Indian chief? What tribe? Sue. <laughs> Sue? Si. <laughs> Let's not go through that again. Who are you, Paley Face? That's Pale Face. <laughs> Paley Face is that statue in the lot. <laughs> My name is Slim Benny. What you Pale Faces do here? We just huh? found gold. Gold? Then me take them. No, no, it's our gold. We work for it. We dug for it. We slave for it. Indian no care. I take him your gold or I take him your scalp. Well, all right. Here. Mm. Slide right off him head. The Indian chief left happily, taking my teepee to his teepee. <laughs> that was the last we saw. Then winter fell. But that didn't stop Tex and me. Or is it Tex and I? What's the difference when you're rich, you can say anything? We hid the gold in a big snowbank. We had a cool minion. The next day, we began to break camp and leave. Well, I'm ready to go, Slim. Me too, Tex. We got all the gold we need. Let's leave before we're ambushed. Wait, Slim. One last thing. I'm going to go down to the spring and fill our canteens with water. There's nothing I like better than nice, cold, sparkling, clear, pure water. What did you say, Tex? Yes, I killed Slim. It was easier than reading that line again. <laughs> Music, boy. That will be back in just a moment. But first... Be happy, go lucky. Be happy, go lucky. Strike, be happy, go lucky. Go lucky, strike today. I parley vous, I speak nine tongues, the linguist great am I. No matter how you say it, brother, lucky strikes the by. I am the leader of the band, I know what tunes you like. And favorite on your hit parade is milder lucky strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Yes, friends, be happy, go lucky, and enjoy your cigarette. Puff by puff, you'll find Lucky's always give you perfect mildness. In fact, scientific tests prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand. But mildness is only part of the enjoyment Lucky's give you. You get rich taste, too. All the deep-down enjoyment that comes from truly fine tobacco. Because L.S. M.F.T., Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So, friends, be happy. Go Lucky. Try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Ladies and gentlemen, the crusade for freedom offers every American an opportunity to play a personal part in a great moral crusade for freedom, faith, and peace throughout the earth. In Berlin on United Nations Day, October 24th, the Freedom Bell will peel out this message of hope inscribed on its rim, that this world, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom. So please don't forget to enroll in the Crusade for Freedom. Thank you. Good night. Sir.
Stay tuned in for the new Harold Perry show that follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.